Welcome to Crimson City, where unionizing workers are kept in cages. People socialize by trying to execute a child, and brilliant scientists research edgelords trying to weaponize autism. In this very quirky and peculiar place, great for a first date, the Second Amendment covers military vehicles. Rare fauna endangers you. Main experts are literal brainlets, and women are acquired in DIY Lego sets. So come and experience our world-class recycling technology. State-of-the-art sanitation facilities, witness our blooming human experimentation industry, and meet new colorful characters and get stabbed by them. Because even if our economy, infrastructure, healthcare, public transportation, and any social order fail, amusement parks still operate. Our locals are always happy to give you a hug, to lend you a hand, or two, or six, and direct you to the nearest 7-Eleven. Here in Crimson City, you will have a vacation you have never dreamed of. Hi guys, it's Pigazoo. And recently, I've been busy hardening my spaghetti cocoon. How was your day? This video is inspired by one of the YouTube channels of all time, Max or Funny Gaming Moments with Memes in Them, 2020 full in Tamil.mp4. So I decided to do something similar to his incorrect summaries. But worse, less funny, and with substandard editing. And this is because my laptop is quite old, and I don't want it to become a fire hazard. And elderly abuse isn't as entertaining if it's racist against the Taiwanese. So sit back and enjoy the incorrect summer. I, I mean, totally original and not bootleg anti walkthrough for the evil within. By the way, this video is meant to be watched on a phone while you're hangover and taking a shit. Our adventure begins like a typical horror story. Trapped inside an Uber with a driver who just won't shut his mouth. So basically, the events of the Neon Genesis Evangelion are a representation of the character's internal struggles as Shinji- What the fuck is he talking about? What do you think, Joseph Gordon-Levitt? You must be an expert. Listen, just because I'm half Japanese, it doesn't mean I know anything about anime. Frankly, I find it quite offensive, so I'm gonna write your name in that death note over here for being racist. Ugh, this ride sucks. Hey Google, play some sick beats to disassociate and get pregnant to. Okay, playing that fucking baby shark song from your three-year-old nephew's birthday party. This is the worst Uber ride ever. We see an even worse crime scene when we arrive at the post-Black Friday Walmart. Our three detectives, Sebastian Castellanos and his subordinates, Nicole Kidman and Joseph Gordon-Levitt go check if there are any sick deals remaining. So many dead. We should call the police. We are the police, Sebastian. Oh, right. Then they find this drunk grandpa who's off his meds again. Hey Sebastian, go check those security cameras while I prank him into thinking he's still stationed in Okinawa. So we look at the security footage, and there's this guy just fucking using security guard's internal organs as a rapid transit system. Whoa, this is so freaking cool! Hey Joseph, look at that! Is this Naruto? Is this guy using Shinshin Nojutsu? I'm telling you, I don't know anime! No, you should really come over and check this out! Oh shit! We wake up hanging upside down in the world's tamest German fetish club. And after a couple of minutes of hardcore raving, we set ourselves free. Ugh, oh, could this day get any worse? Entschuldigung, kleiner Junge. Are those keys to the bathroom? I just need to wash my Neschenkenkürbel! Well, that was weird, but they're European, so it's a culture shock, I guess. Let's just go home and rest for a- Oh! Apparently, they are making a sequel to Mandy and I'm an extra. I would tell Nicolas Cage over here that cameras aren't rolling yet, but I doubt it would make much of a difference. Ah, could this day get any worse? Jesus Christ! The exit closes in front of our face, but we find a shortcut through the Kentucky Fried Water Slide. This is the last thing your KFC hot wings see before ending up in your favorite chicken bucket. But don't worry, at least they are reunited with their loved ones in the Chicken Valhalla. If you really think about it, KFC buckets are just family tombs for flightless birds. 
The secret ingredient to our KFC crispy hot wings? It's family! After getting cleansed in the putrid waters of family values, we hobble through a sewer level, and I appreciate the game for getting the formalities out of the way early. After stumbling upon a computer located perilously close to the giant hole leading into the sewers, I realized I had discovered the IT department. To my relief, the main sysadmin is out on a lunch break enjoying the fine art of barehanded sewer fishing, so we can read these documents that talk about something called STEM and brainwave synchronization. I will explain that later. And staff falling unconscious and wanting to escape the hospital. I can't blame them because I want to escape this place as well. Especially since Nicolas Cage is back and he's either preparing for his role or just having a break. One could never truly know. After many attempts at figuring out this game's stealth mechanics, I finally leave the set of Live League exclusive Husqvarna commercial. Oh, could they get any worse? Hey, Vsauce, Michael here. Jesus Christ, why are there so many empty wheelchairs? Did the owners just stand up and leave? You might think all of this is funny. Well, because it is. The absurd amount of pain inflicted upon the main character in the first three minutes of the game is pure comedy gold. Just like Reddit gold, but less embarrassing. It's Takeshi's Castle meets Prince of Persia meets Fall Guys meets global meat processing industry. It's funny because our hero, Sebastian Alvaro Castellanos, is one of the least interesting protagonists I've ever seen. He has two personality modes, brain dead and regular dead. His reaction to everything is top 10 Joe Biden senile moments. His spilling guts have a wider range of expression than his face. He's such a cardboard, he yells out money to the UPS trucks driving by. He's so bland that he could power the entire Assassin's Creed franchise in the secret Ubisoft labs where they try to distill pure mediocrity. Sebastian finally leaves the hospital, only to discover that George Bush is the president again. Hey, get in! I wanna show you a really cool trick! Okay, but if it's gonna be sign language for spelunking again, then I'm getting off. Hey, what is going on? I specifically instructed you not to kidnap any albino children. Oh, we just grabbed him because he has severe vitamin D deficiency, so we will launch him into the sun. I'm Nicole Kidman. So we are escaping failing American infrastructure while the city gets progressively 9 11 This is a horror game, by the way. So you said you were gonna show me a cool trick? Yeah, man, check this out. Oh my god, what the fuck is wrong with you? I'm Nicole Kidman! Our car soars through the air, while the heroes have this cool zero gravity scene. This is a horror game, by the way. So we crash in a forest and are greeted by a disemboweled horse. I have no desire to disturb the tranquil rural lifestyle. But I must fulfill my duty as a police officer and look into what seems to be a minor domestic quarrel. Excuse me, sir, did you see anything out of the ordinary? Oh shit, are you okay? The confused man with skin cancer tackles us slightly, which leaves us no choice and we execute him on the spot. This is still the tutorial, but now we're armed. The game now teaches us basic combat mechanics, such as coping with our arthritic hands, as well as confronting the IRS. 
What it doesn't teach us though, is that you can destroy devotional items for profit. Like this one that was glued to a rat for some reason. So the first time I saw one of these, um, Greece's greatest chisels, I was like, huh, I hope I'm not missing an important power-up. Once in a while, we go through a mirror to enter this mental hospital, and by mental, I mean it exists only in your mind. This is the overworld of the game, where we can save our progress by filling out medical paperwork. So obviously, there are no quick saves, but there is an electroconvulsive therapy chair, which allows us to buy upgrades. It is powered by jars of pickles scattered throughout the game. And I don't really have a joke about it, so here's a funny picture. Wait, not that one. No, 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 where is it? Hold on guys, I'm, I'm looking for the picture for you. Where is it? Uh, Where's it? Come on. Come on, where is it? I should really organize it better. Where is that funny picture? It should be somewhere here, I guess. It should be somewhere here. Oh, there you go. Look at this funny dog. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Apparently, this dog was a Nazi? Then we see a medieval peasant from The Witcher 3, who felt nostalgic for a nuclear explosion. This awakens a red parasite which transforms the innocent village into a Marilyn Manson music video. I don't feel like fighting, so I try to approach the situation like I would approach stealing insulin from an 8-year-old woman at a bus stop. Very quietly. <laughs> Sebastian also gets to explore the countryside in that Philadelphian style by picking up syringes filled with unknown substance and injecting them into his arm. Don't worry about what's inside, it will heal you. Trust me. Finally, I'm safe. There are no more zombies. Ah, oh, look at that. Not a cell phone in sight. Just people living in the moment. It's a dinner party and I wasn't invited. But the joke's on them because I got the last bottle of ketchup. Oh, fuck. I guess I ruined their barbecue. I gotta go before they make me a mascot of their ethnically non-specified food festival. That tastes like shit! Mamma mia, that's a spicy meatball! Why did I even admit to having ketchup? In hindsight, I shouldn't have said that. Santa Claus was right. I must be disabled. I don't even like ketchup. So we jump into the water. Twice. Because this cutscene makes no sense. Chapter 3 opens with Sebastian's trunk check and covering tracks of someone else's war crimes. The scenery upgrades from a small hamlet to Titus Andronicus. It's a Shakespeare joke, don't worry, I don't get it either. Later we find the doctor Blair Witching in one of the houses. No, don't shoot, I'm not like the other guys. Who are you, and why do you speak such good German if you're from Argentina? My name is Dr. Jimenez. <laughs> and I am your local mad scientist. My main hobbies are non-consensual lobotomies, and I'm currently working on a giant laser that will turn homeless people into dinosaurs. I'm just a quirky guy like that. <laughs> Please uh, ignore the blood on my gown. What blood? That's what I'm talking about. Anyway, I'm here looking for my, uh, how do you call them, uh, patient. Remember that childish albino we kidnapped? It's pronounced childish gambino. Yes, I remember. The one he wanted to launch into the sun. Correct. Uh, I wasn't exactly truthful with you. His name is Leslie, and that kid is very sick, and I must help him. He's sick? What's wrong with him? He's got... Ligma. Uh, ligma? What is Ligma? Ha 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 
<laughs> Localized inflammatory growth and motor ataxia. What? It's a rare neurological disorder that affects the central nervous system and causes inflammation in specific regions of the brain and spinal cord, leading to impaired motor function and coordination. Symptoms may include muscle weakness, difficulty walking like a normal person, dog whistle hands, cognitive impairment, repetitiveness, being excessively white, as well as cognitive impairment. Oh shit, that sounds terrible. But why did you laugh when I asked you about Ligma? Oh, it's unrelated. I just thought about this funny clip of a cat squishing a bird with his ass. Oh, c'est fragile! Trop de cuve! I agree, it's a very funny clip. Oh, c'est fragile! Trop de cuve! So we gotta follow Leslie so he can help us advance the plot. I'm gonna fuck off Blair reaching in the attic this time. Good luck! So we need to find Leslie to finally launch him into the sun and cure his ligma. To do so, we need to open the gate, and to get to the gate we need to navigate this peaceful village. Local culture. Isn't it beautiful? So apparently I'm interrupting a music festival. Burning Woman 2014 if you will. And these attendees are now 5 days without a proper shower. I understand their frustration, but please leave your complaints in the box 30 meters away from me. This place taught me many valuable lessons. Primarily that I need to check my eyesight because I tend to shoot both too far and too close. That bringing a knife into a gunfight is a good idea if your opponent is me. That approaching blinking landmines is not Darwin approved. Whoa, dude, don't go into that porta party with that torch, it's gonna fucking blow! You might be wondering why I'm trying to solve conflicts using Will Smith's School of Diplomacy, but that's because I only have one bullet left and I'm saving it for myself. Although, knowing my accuracy... I would probably hit a stray puppy instead. What? That puppy's love could cure cancer? Oh, too bad, honey. We'll get you another one. The festival is a celebrity guest, and to my misfortune, it's Nicolas Cage again, held in this traditional Nicolas Cage containment facility. I guess they locked him up because of his last name. People do really hate the Coppolas. So I decide to free him to gain favors among the Hollywood Illuminati, so I finally get to smell Anya Taylor-Joy's hair. But he doesn't seem to appreciate it. You are kept in chains! I tried to help you! Jokes on you. Ah. 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 I'm into this shit. So apparently king shaming is bad. Mink shaming? Also bad. No need to lose your head over it. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. Nicolas Cage stars in SCP Containment Breach. And he gets to fulfill his lumberjack fantasies on me. Unfortunately, Sebastian Alvaro's Miguel Castellanos charisma, or lack thereof, makes him a perfect piece of wood. So Nick is attracted to me like pick a joke displayed on the screen. So I gotta prepare a little better for the fan meeting of the star of Academy Award winning Ghost Rider 2. And what would help me is some ammunition and some explosives. It's a bit of a daunting task, and when I can't find any explosives, explosives tend to find me. Like on the South Ho Chi Minh Trail supply route to South Vietnam in 1972. Link, don't open that chest, it was sent to us from Mogadishu. After scouring the festival grounds and asking for help from a chick with piercings, MDMA berserkers, and a guy with braces, we can finally face our foe and his groupies. To achieve that, we tell them that we have the last bottle of deodorant in the entire festival, and they can get it if they politely form a queue. Then I just file a couple of restraining orders at him, and show off to him my Kurt Cobain's microphone. He 
dissolves into red skittles that soak into the mysterious edgelord, who then walks into a wall and disappears. And if you are confused about what the fuck is going on, then don't worry, because in the next episodes we learn who is the mysterious edgelord and what is he so edgy about, how will Kidman face the challenge of being a woman working for the Illuminati as a sus imposter, how do we seduce extremely forearmed women and why is there an underground petroleum refinery. Tune in next time for The Evil Within Anti-Walkthrough.